Hey, welcome back to the ECL Elite Semifinals. We saw one side of it earlier, Brandon, where H Reds took a 2 0 series lead against Granite Gaming. And now we are in for some FBK against Rwanda. Yeah, we saw a great two games, like you mentioned, between Granite and H Reds. They're up 2 0. We wrap that and put a bow on it and move on to our next semifinal with Fediestad and for Lunda, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Fediestad, a team that was kind of underrated and doubted coming into the season, many not even having them as a playoff team due to some of the changes that they had within the roster, but yet here they are yet again per usual as more things change, more things say the same. They are in the semifinal and facing the team that knocked them out last season in for Lunda. This is going to be a lot of fun. Do they get the redemption or does Forlunda move on to get another final? Now let's pop over to the bracket and have a look, Brandon, but you're exactly right. Uh, FBK is wanting to come back and has nothing to lose against a team like Forlunda right now. Yeah, and they faced a really tight series against IQ. We got to see that a little bit last week, and that was a really close one. Fediestad was up to nothing in that series. IQ clawed their way back, but Fediestad able to finish the deal in that one to get to this point, while Forlunda met Havu in what would normally be a finals matchup in many other seasons. They met them in round one and pulled off a sweep, something that I don't think many people saw coming. I'm sure a lot of our fellow viewers had that penciled in as a six potentially seven game series well for lunda they took care of business early and got the one of two sweeps of the quarterfinals to move on to the semi so both these teams with some forward momentum has some tough opponents in round one nothing different here in the semifinals as they will now face against one another Nothing different is right. So a little similar than what we saw at the top of your bracket where Atred's going in a sweep and carrying on and winning two games for Lunda going with a sweep coming in here. I don't think those two games are going to be very easy to grab for either team here, Brandon. Yeah, and it's always tough when you're in the semifinals and you are meeting these teams that have been in the top of the standings really all season long. And you can see it in the semifinals with the seeding. H Reds at one for London at three. Fetty is that at four. The only team that was sort of an underdog in terms of the seeding was Grant, and we saw them earlier, as we mentioned. So this is at that point. These are four of the best teams in all of Europe. They face off against one another. You never know what you're going to get, but there is one thing you can expect, and that is really tough games and a tough series. You're going to have to play well and earn everything that you get if you want to prevail and move on to that finals matchup. Well, let's see how they've done so far for London with playing two games in the playoffs. FBK playing six games in the playoffs. So, uh, or I guess there was games played before as well, Brent. Yeah, and it's interesting because it's similar to that Grand and H Reds matchup to where for Lunda, despite playing less games, has the same amount of goals as Fediestad does. And obviously kind of hard to compare the goals against just because there were two more games for Fediestad. But what really sticks out to me, perfect PKs on both sides of the ice. Neither team has allowed a power play goal yet. We'll see if that changes. We saw the special teams really make a difference in our first series. Going to be really fun to see if that makes a difference here between these two squads. Yeah, and what about the penalty kill here, Brandon? 100% penalty kill on either side. Yeah, and that's going to just be so interesting. It's not often that you see that. You don't see perfect PKs match up against one another. And what really makes it interesting is that neither power play was really spectacular in game, or excuse me, in round one either. Fetty stat at around 16% for Lunda with exactly a quarter of their power plays being converted on. So the PK success could continue for both these teams. We'll have to wait and see, or maybe these two teams maybe figured out some of the struggles that they had on that power play last week. And let's see who's going to be playing for the respective teams on our screen is for FBK. We'll have Malin in the middle, Afe on the left-hand side, Fuppeltoflen on the right-hand side, Sebe Larsen playing left defense with Mr. Nipsili playing right defense, and then Mick Savid in net. 
Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. We mentioned how Fetty has had a lot of roster changes in the offseason. It's a reason why people didn't really know if they would make it to this point, but the defense really has stepped up for Fetty Estad so far. So this is going to be a lot of fun to see how they match up against a star-studded for London squad. And on the right-hand side for Lunda, you have Pat Slaff at center, Plea Maker on left wing, Eki, of course, on right wing, Timu and Loimu on the back, and with Cape in between the pipes. I'm so excited to see Cape go against McSaven, but let's check out our head-to-head -head centers as we have Malin going head-to-head -head against Pat Slaff. Yeah, and this is going to be a lot of fun. Malin kind of the playmaker for this Fediestad team. We know Pat's Loud can contribute in many different ways, whether it be offense or defense. Both of these guys are really good on the faceoff dot as well. This is a really even center matchup. Expect these two to really control the pace of play for their forward trios. Yeah, with a face-off percent of 58% for Mao, and I'm excited to see with both of these players over 50% in the draw, as possession is everything, and they are going to be looking to get the puck to their wingers as we have a look at the head-to-head -head matchups here, Brandon. Yeah, and somebody I'm really going to be looking out for is Afe. Eight goals in the six games last week, only one assist. It's not often you see those type of numbers. We know how bona fide of a goal scorer he is, and it's going to be really interesting because Eki is on that same side at right wing, so those two are going to see each other on the ice on the same side a lot. I would not be shocked if we called their days a lot here in these two games, Tegan. Yeah, and a lot of hits by Fapa Toflin as he likes to throw the weight around, and so does Plea Maker. So it's going to be interesting to see those two on the same side as well, Brandon, as we pop over to who's going to be defending these gentlemen. As on the left-hand side, you see Sebe Larson and Mr. Nipsuli against Timu and Loimu. Yeah, this is where I think the series could very well be won and lost. These four players could really make the difference for this te for these teams. We know how Timu and Loimu are together. They have won championships. They have been contenders for a long time. But Sebi Larson and Mr. Nipsuli, those are the two guys I'm really looking at to step up against a star-studded for London team. If they can really play to the highest caliber, they may be able to pull this thing off. It's going to be a lot of fun to see if they're able to do that. And in between the pipes here, Brandon, for either side, it's McSaven against Kepe. And this is going to be amazing. Look at those goals against average. Look at those save percentage. Yeah, and this is going to be so much fun. Two of the top goalies in all of Europe facing off right in front of our very eyes. Kape, a championship winner, a goalie that we know is able to take a team to the mountaintop and be a big reason they do that. While McSaven on the other end is able to do the same thing. He was a big reason the Fetty is that beat IQ last week. You got to look at him and he was absolutely phenomenal in that one to nothing triple overtime victory that they had in game two. That's going to be a lot of fun. This could be low scoring games and these two will be the head of that if it does turn out that way. As we see two shutouts for McSaven at 1.17 goals against average and 87 save percentage in six games played, Brandon. Those numbers are unheard of anywhere, never mind in playoffs. Yeah, and I think that that last part is what you really do have to emphasize on. This is not two players that have played bottom of the pack teams. This is against playoff teams, and so much so to where Forlanda played Havu, Fediestad played 5 seed IQ. They played really good teams on the other end, so for them to have played that way in round one with that type of success really does show you how elite these two goalies are in their own respective rights. Yeah, this is going to be a fantastic matchup here. As we get a look at Forlanda, there they are. They are ready to go, it looks like. Um, Brandon, what do you have to say for these guys here? It's going to be a lot of fun. We know how good Forlunda is. They are used to making it to the finals, but Fetty is that. They pose a tough competition on the other end. They've been doubted all season. They're sort of kind of doubted here coming into this match. I'm sure a lot of people have Forlunda moving on to the next round due to that championship pedigree, due to being a finalist in multiple ECL elite seasons. Going to be a lot of fun to see these two match up with a lot to prove for both of these two sides. This is going to be an absolute blast for sure for Wanda against FBK ECL Elite Semi-Finals. This is game one of a best of seven series. 
And here we go at Sports Gamer GG. Noimu over to Timu and breaks out from London in the red jerseys. FBK in the white and green. You see their lineups in the bottom right hand corner. Zaki wearing the gold helmet. Gets that one back to Timu. As we saw Nikki Dangles in it last game as that puck gets carried in behind the net. Here's Sebe Larson. Over on the right hand side to Mallon. Allen tries to thread the needle. Good pick off there by Yaki, and the puck's picked up by Loimu. Loimu, good pass ahead to Pleemaker. Pleemaker looking fashionable in his Gucci hoodie. His pats laugh down low with it. Still holding on. He's fought by Mr. Ditsuli, who sends it back to the point. Timu to Loimu, and that one's going to be blocked there by Efe. Isebe Larson goes back to his partner, Ditsuli. Ditsuli. Back to Sebe Larson. And he threads that one ahead to Mallon. Down low to Fuffletoff. Then he tries to go back door. But that one's picked up by Eki coming back on the back check. And now an odd man rush up ahead. But a good bump off there by Mallon to jar the puck back to the point. Here's Batslav over to Timu. He fires Eki battling for it in front. He goes off his skate and into McSaven. Yeah, and we'll be saying that a lot. Into McSaven. McSaven going to be a big part of this Fedia stab group if they want to pull off this series win. He has been spectacular all playoffs and all season long. He's one of the top goalies in EU for a reason. And we got his first taste of action just right there on that save. We'll see a face-off in FBK territory. That one's going to be one back. Eki, Timu, Loimu, shot on, and that one goes wide. Sebe Larson up the left-hand side. Into the middle is Malin. Back over to Sebe Larson, but Malin picks it back up, and they can't get around. Another red wall, Brandon. Last time it was H-Reds. This time it's for Lunda. Here goes Eki. Eki through the middle. Drops that one down with a quick pass to Pleemaker. That one doesn't connect. And it's Eki on the left-hand side. And it looks like... I look... Looks like we might have had a little bit of a connection, a little bit of a server issue uh, there, Brandon. So we're going to pop back into the studio, and we're lucky it was a, um, a close, fun game there. Yeah, and if that is any sign of what we will see throughout these next two games, I think we're in for a good one, Tegan. A few chances for both sides. You're seeing the defense of Ferlunda really come to the forefront. McSaven having to make a couple of timely saves there through the first about six or seven minutes that we got through. So a lot of what we expected, quality defense, quality goaltending, we're seeing that so far, and we're going to hope that that continues. I think we're going to get two really close games, not high scoring necessarily, but two close games that will present some action nevertheless yeah we're gonna get tons and tons of action in this hockey game is what about that trap by Frolunda? we saw it uh from h reds so i don't know if Frolunda was watching but it almost looks like the same red wall yeah, and it's something that Ferlunda is very good at as well. We spent a lot of time in our first series talking about how H-Reds is so good at locking down that trap. You try to get through the neutral zone, and it's once you get to that blue line, there's just that red and green wall that is Ferlunda. It's hard to break them. It's hard to get past them, and you almost do have to create turnovers or make plays where you can kind of beat them with speed and go over their head if you want to break that. So we're seeing that to start out. Ferlunda doing a good job of securing during that blue line, not letting Fediestad get past them. We'll see if it leads to the same success that we saw from H-Reds earlier in our first series. Yeah, we're going to see if it does lead to that success, Brandon. And hopefully it does for either team. Is uh, no bias around here, that's for sure. But let's head over as we've got some recent scores here, Brandon, uh, from around the league. So we'll kind of pop in and talk about uh, what we see here. Yeah, and you can see a few of them quarterfinals matchups and one of them on the top, our semifinals matchup we saw earlier in case you were just joining us. H-Reds taking a 2 to nothing series lead over Granite by virtue of two shutouts, 4 nothing in Game 1, 2 nothing in Game 2. And what's interesting is that you see the two series of our opponents in game or Series 2. Fediestad, the 2-4 to four series one over IQ and the sweep from Forlunda. And a common trend, a lot of overtimes and a lot of close games, Tegan. 
Yeah, that's what I wanted to take a look at there, Brandon, when we brought this up is, you know, Fralunda may have swept Havu Gaming, but those were all one goal games. Yeah, and it's something that if you um follow them on Twitter, Flyer Kungen, Havu's captain, said very much so in a tweet that they were all really close games and a lot of the Fralunda guys agreed that these games could have gone either way. I could have very well with a play here or a play there been a two to two series and essentially have turned in to a best of three. And even on the other side with IQ and Fetty is that every single game other than one game one ended by a goal difference three of them going to overtime so it just kind of shows you how tight all of these teams are we talked about it all season the parity there is in each division right now in the ecl you've seen it throughout the playoffs the ecl elite division no different a lot of tight games and a lot of close scores yeah a lot of tight games a lot of close scoring and the h reds was able to carry on to have six consecutive wins do you think we'll see for one to match that Man, it's going to be tough. I think the key for them is going to be how can you beat McSaver? We talked about that save percentage for him earlier, over 87%. He was a hot goaltender. He had two shutouts, as you can see right there. It's not often you can win a game with one goal, but Fetty is that man should do it not once, but twice. And now it's on the back of their goaltender. We got to call that game last week and it was amazing just some of the saves he was able to make IQ generating chances but McSaven just making some saves not just the ones that you would expect him to make but even a few that you wouldn't expect him to make if he can play the way he did last week it's gonna be a tough task for for London we know how much star power they have not just in the forward group but with all five really gonna be fun to watch that matchup it is going to be great hockey Nonetheless, as we'll pop over and check out some of the pro action, Brandon, where we officially got our feet wet. And here's the playoff tree here. Yeah, and it's interesting because you have to remember all four of these teams have a chance to make a leap. They will either win it all and clinch their spot, replacing Jer Gordon, who was relegated automatically. Or they will go into the relegation series and play one of the bottom three teams. So all of these teams do have a chance to be promoted. But what's interesting, how about Reality Check and Yip Yavoska escaping as the top two seeds going all the way to seven games? They were all down in their series originally. They came back. Found a way to get here, and now Yip Yavoskil actually won their game one versus Arctic. So a lot to look forward to, and keep an eye on this Pro Series division because a few of these teams, and at least one of these teams, will be up here in the Elite Division next season. They definitely will. Is Yip Yavoskil going one nothing against Arctic, and then Reality Check and Stargazing has not played yet. But I expect that to be a very, very good series, Brandon. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And Stargazing, they do pose a threat to Reality Check. They've been a really hot team. There's a lot of players that are familiar with one another on these two teams. And Stargazing and Reality Check, maybe two teams that teams didn't really expect to see at this point of standings, maybe have overachieved in the eyes of some, but they have both been hot. Reality Check's been good all pro series long. Stargazing has gotten on a really hot playoff run. You know how dangerous those types of teams are to just get momentum going at the right time. That series is going to be a lot of fun to watch. I, I can't wait to see those two face off. As here we get a look at Forestad, BK, and these guys look like they are ready to dive in and get going here. Brandon, as they've got a heavy team on the other side in Rolanda. Yeah, and you have to be 100% locked in when you're facing a team like Rolanda on the other side. They are used to really every moment that could possibly be thrown at you. They have all the experience you could ask for, and Fetty is that going to have to be on top of their game and locked in as we get things back underway here, Tegan. So both teams waited down to the eight minute mark when the lag out occurred and we are back at Sports Gamer GG for the ECL Elite. The cream of the crop, baby, semi-final. This popped off now. Back to Malin who was covering at the point. And here comes Malin, still holding onto it on the forehand. Good job by Prolanda to hold their uh fbk's player offside there forcing the turnover loimu over to timu timu brings that puck in over to playmaker 
Queen Maker is looking for Aki in front, but he finds. Oh, it goes off a body and in, and that is going to be Queen Maker's goal. I thought he found the defender and Loimu coming in. My apologies there. That's a great goal from Forlunda. I know it took that unfortunate bounce there, but nevertheless, you have to get yourself in position to take advantage of that bounce. And it all started from the quick passes entering the zone and taking advantage in front of that. A great job there from Forlunda after the lag out, really taking this momentum and getting a goal here to start out one to nothing here in game one of the series. As Playmaker would probably say, it's all Gucci. As here he comes again over to Eki, and that's a great save by McSaven. Here's Sebi Larson, goes behind the net to Mr. Nipsuli with the saucer pass picked off by Timu. Timu ahead to Eki. Eki, back to Pat, stop down to Eki in the give and go. Eki in the left hand corner, out high, and that's a great save by McSaven. Another big save by McSaven as he stops Patslav. Here's Loimu over to Eki. Eki brings it up the left-hand side, tries to send it through the middle to Pleamaker, and that one's going to be picked off there by Mr. Mipsuli. Couple top them bringing it out. He just goes over to Sebe Larson. And here comes Nipsuli up the left-hand side. Can't get into the zone, and I think that is going to be the struggle for FBK here, Brennan. Yeah, that's the same thing that we saw Brandon struggle with, getting into the zone and getting opportunities. We'll see if maybe Fetty's dad watched a little film and maybe saw a way that they can break that because Forlunda does play a very similar defensive style. But nevertheless, it'll be said Forlunda team that enter the second period with a lead. And it was with that late goal from Playmaker that made the difference, Tegan. And uh, those are the goals that are going to go in when you have two goaltenders that are this good playing together, isn't it, Brandon? You see all five FBK players back and playing their correct positions. That one kind of just uh, pinballed into the back of the net. Yeah, and it is what we talked about in the open of the series, how good these two goalies are. And we talked about defense maybe being what turns the tide in this series. Well, the goaltenders, no different. And you could even argue even more so the saves that these two goalies are able to make, not even just the ones that you expect them to, but they have that ability to pull the rabbit out of the hat and make that unexpected save that you would think most goalies would not be able to make. These are going to be some close games. These goalies will not let a lot pass them going to be of the utmost importance for both of these teams to capitalize on the chances they have. As we dive into period number two in the ECL Elite Semifinals. Pro Lunda in red, FBK in white. You see the respective lineups in the bottom right and left-hand corner of your screen. This team is ahead to Pleamaker. Pleamaker tries to drop that one down low. Nipsui battles and gets it ahead to Sebe Larson. He tried to carry it in. They do get it in. The shot is on. And Timo with a good block. Fuck on the right-hand side. It's going to be Sebe Larson down. Trying to activate from the point. But it's going to be carried out by Frolunda nonetheless. Pleamaker first in there. Pleamaker trying to battle. Helping Frolunda come up with the puck. And Loimu just takes it back into their own zone. Puck brought out here by Frolunda. It's going to be Timu. Timu, good pass over to Potsloff. Drops for Pleamaker to Eki. Eki behind the net to Pleamaker, and that one's going to be picked off by Vapo Thoflin. And then Eki takes a tripping penalty in the offensive zone. How about that pickoff there from Vapo Thoflin? He was right there where he needed to be. It was a chance once again for Forlunda in that middle of the ice area, right in that slot area. But Vapo Thoflin, not only all over it to draw the penalty, but all over it to stop what could have potentially been a goal to make this a 2-0 lead for Forlunda. It's Malin now. Gets that back to the point to Sebe Larson. Down to Malin. Malin across, and that one is just picked up by Forlunda and sent down. McSaven comes in, sends it up ice, trying to save some time here on the power play. Good job by Patslip to stop that one, and Frolunda might get a chance here. Here goes Pleamaker ahead to Loimu. He just fires that one on. It goes wide. Patslip back at the point with it. Tries to just dump it in. Does a good job. And kills off about 30 seconds. 
of that power play. 30 to go. Afe drops it back to Mr. Nipsuli. Up to Fapatovla. He just carries it in on the back end, looking for a lane. Finally finds Malin. Malin across, and Timu intercepts. Potsloff gets it out, and Eki's out of the box with the puck. Eki. Loimu, Eki. Flea Maker wraps it around back to the point to Timu. There's Loimu with a shot. Potsloff picks up the rebound and makes no mistake. And a great play there from Fralunda. You can see on your screen, calm, cool, and collected. Not getting too excited yet, but a great play there. It all started from the pass to the point and getting the slap shot off. Pat's left right where he needed to be to clean up the garbage, put the puck in the net, and now Fralunda in a rather favorable position halfway through this game up to the nothing and playing spectacular defense to boot. Puck down low, here's Eki. Back to Noimu to Eki looking behind the net and it's a 2-0 game. You said it, we're about halfway through this game number one of the best of seven series here. Rolanda against FBK on Sports Gamer GG. That's up to Timu. Across to Eki as that was a slow pass. He was probably looking to put some heat on that one is Eki. Back to Noimu, to Timu, Noimu, Timu in there. We see that a lot from King of Apes and Domi. Is those H Reds D love to go back and forth, and so does Fralunda. Timu. Timu to Eki. Back to Loimu. Loimu, what a pass to Pleamaker and a better save from McSaven. Pleamaker in the right hand side, looking for a pass across. Mr. Nipsuli intercepts, but a good poke by Pleamaker gets it to Eki. Good job by for London in the offensive zone here as Eki drops it down to Pat's lap to Timu. He's got Eki up high and gives it to him. Eki, very high up as they've gone into a little bit of a uh, an umbrella here as there was a five-minute power play on that goal. And FBK doing a very good job of killing that off red. Yeah, really only one or two high-octane shots so far for for London. You have to credit that umbrella formation that Fedius that has gotten themselves in and some of the chances that for London has had, the save has been all over them. Up behind the net, Eki just tries to send that one back to the point. Loimu comes down. Back to Timu. To Loimu. To Eki to Loimu. Loimu up high. Tried to go across to Timu, but he couldn't get it over there and you see him just kind of stop there in frustration. As Eki goes skating by him. Here's Patslov now. As Mr. Nipsuli sends that one ahead to Malin. Tried to get that one over to the left-hand side, but Loimu does a good job to get that one ahead. Here's Timu now into the zone. Good drag there by Patslov. And pops up Patslov with a shot on. And that's a great save by McSavid. And McSavid is just being barraged with saves right now, isn't he, Brandon? Yeah, but he's showing up every single time. He has to understand the assignment. He's done so well. They kill off that big five-minute major. Now Fedius that gets a chance to regroup and try to mount themselves and come back down to the nothing with five to go in the second. Here's Eki now as he brings it into the zone. Poked off his stick. And Foppeltoff then gets it up the left-hand side. Loimu intercepts. Loimu, good pass over to Pleamaker. Pleamaker stops up. Goes through the middle, but Afe with a great interception. Who sends Malin right-hand side. Foppeltoff then. Babatov then coming in, they have numbers. The pass doesn't go through his plea maker back to help out. And that's one thing about Frolunda Brandon is their forwards are always back helping out in the defensive zone. Defense is a five-man effort for Rolanda. They epitomized that. And that was an example of that right there. That Fetty is that gets a rush. They have an opportunity, but the forwards doing their job, back checking, getting back, helping out their goalie and Kape and making things easy on them. Not letting Fetty is that get a quick opportunity or an easy one. As five man game is FBK comes in and gets one. It's gonna be Afe. And we expected to call Afe's name. We talked about him, we talked about Eki. They are on the same exact side. And Afe puts his first goal of the series in right there. And what was an interesting play? You could barely see the puck. There was a lot of traffic in front of the net. There was a defender right by the stick of Afe, but none of it made a difference. There was just enough open cage and just enough space for Afe to put that through. And now Fedistad gets their first goal of the game to cut that deficit in half. 
A little bit of a broken play, but we saw a broken play from Frolunda to get their first goal, right, uh, Brandon? So at least we can say we're all even now as Timu rips one on at the end of the second. And keep in mind that that goal was in the last minute of the period. And you and me talk about this a lot, Tegan. Those end of the period goals can be so, so big. They can really sway the momentum, even just change the way that each team looks at the game going into the next period. Look at Verlunda. They go from being up two to nothing, a little bit of cushion, to now only up by one. And if Fedius that scores again, it's a tie game. And for Fedius that, now you're chasing the game a little bit less. And you have all 20 minutes ahead of you. You only got to get one to tie in. Then from that point on forward, it's a new game, a fresh start, a clean slate. So that's a big goal. If Fedius that comes back and wins this game, that right there could be the potential one that swayed the momentum in it. Is that puck is going to be put on here by uh, that gorgeous shot by Patsov as he scored there. And here's the rebound that was a little bit of a broken play there, Brandon. Yeah, and I guess you could just say right place, right time for Afe. The puck kind of just fell right where he was, and there wasn't even a lot of space there for him to put that through. There was a defenseman and a skate in front of them. There wasn't a lot of room between Kape and the post, and Afe was still able to put that in. So you got to be in the right position to get those type of plays, but Afe was there. He capitalized on it, and Fedius that now puts this to just a one-goal game. Here comes Malin as he just collapsed that one down though. It's going to be picked up by Noimu as he brings that out and that is icing with 18.38 to go here in the third period in the ECL Elite Semifinals 2-1 hockey game for Lunda in red, FBK in white. Afe sends that one ahead to Fapatafu. One's going to be put out front. Backhanded on and stopped by Cape. A couple of nice saves there from Cape. And you see Fedia's stats starting to get things going. Rather impressive there considering they had that icing. Started out in their own zone and really worked their way forward to get that opportunity. A nice job from Fedia's stat. Let's we'll see if they can capitalize here in the offensive zone. That one's going to be poked off. And Malin's going to bring it out for FBK at the right hand side. Here's Mr. Nipsuli. Down low, they almost squeeze it into their own net. Bubble Dovla now. Back to the point, Sebe Larson. Sebe Larson into the middle, and what a save by Kepe! As that backhand almost snuck through. Oh man, Fetty is that so, so close a few times here in the last few minutes and you kind of have to feel if you're done, like, man, we're so, so close. If we can just break this one in, we're getting some looks and we're close to converting on them. It's just a few inches here, a few inches there and some saves by Kape that's been the difference in this being a tie game and being a one goal lead for Frolanda. Fuck is going to be sent ahead by Frolanda, but... They give that one away to Sebe Larson, and here goes Mr. Nipsuli. Here's Pleamaker coming down. Sauces that one over to Eki. It's poked off Eki's stick. And Sebe Larson gets that one up to Afe. Over to Sebe Larson, over to Afe, and that one is going to be brought in offside, and that's okay for Frolunda. Uh, they don't mind playing the slow game right now, Brandon. Yeah, up by one in a spectacular defensive team. That definitely goes to Frolunda's advantage. Now, obviously, you don't want to play too conservative. Fetty is that kind of the aggressors, it feels like, the last 10 minutes or so. Frolunda going to want to try to put their foot on the gas pedal a little bit. Don't feel comfortable with just a one goal lead, especially with Fetty is that really starting to pick up the pace. Here's Sebe Larson. Ahead to Malin. That one's going to be poked ahead. Loimu, Patslav. Nice little play by Eki to get it back to Patslav going to be shot on and why Loimu at the point with it for Frolunda down to Patslav drops it down behind the net to Pleamaker Pleamaker's met by Sebe Larson who gets the puck out for FPK and they go to work Malin's over the line good interception by Pleamaker he brings it ahead for Frolunda Patslav's bumped off of the puck as he's met by so many FPK players they really want this puck back as Afe comes in Drops it back to Sebe Larson. He's met by Aki. So deep in the zone for a left winger. 
Yeah, very deep in the zone. You'll see Forlunda do that every now and then. They have that ability to throw a few different looks, and a few players won't be in that typical position that you'll see. And you'll see it especially with Eki. Him and the right D in Loimu will kind of swap spots every now and then, and they will throw that different look at you. So Forlunda, it's a little unconventional maybe from some teams, but it really works out for them, and they really know how to convert it at a high rate. Here's Loimu. Gets that one back to Podstaff and Timu brings it over the line. He's got room, drops for Eki. Eki carrying it down. Nice move. Tries a shot and McSaven with a big save. And yeah, McSaven throws it out. Trying to maybe catch for one to sleeping, Brandon. It's February, Tegan. We throw those out. What can I say? This puck over on the left hand side. Malin. Good pass back to Sebe Larson, but Podstaff gets it ahead to Loimu. Good touch pass to Pleamaker. Maker. He's over the line. L skating in. Shot is on. It's loose. And good pickup there by Fapo Dovlin as he came back and helped out. Fuck in the corner for Fapo Dovlin. He tries to spin past that out front. Spinning to open that lane up, Brandon. That was close. Three and a half minutes to go. Here's Malin, he's poked off. Good job by Frolunda. They just need to put up the red wall, and here it is. But the puck's brought in by Sebe Larson, bumped off, and Eki gets it ahead to Loimu. Loimu's stripped of the puck. Eki's down low, he's got that small body. He shovels it away, he still has it. Stick lifted by Malin, but Loimu intercepts. And that one's going to be popped back out from Potsloff now. Potsloff. This is a great four check from, from, from Fadius Dad right now. They're really applying pressure. Eki back over to Loimu as he brings it in. Good interception by Afe. Is that's what we're noticing is the wingers coming way back to help the team out. Is that one's poke checked by Eki. Eki still battling for it just inside the line. They finally get it out with 47 seconds to go in the clock. Boyman poked off. Here's Mr. Nipsuli. That puck jars loose and it's back to Sebe Larson. He moves that one ahead to Malin. Malin over to the right hand side. Bumped hard, but they get entry. That's fired just wide. And it's going to come all the way around and back into their own zone. 25 seconds on the clock, and that one's passed to Pleamaker accidentally by FBK. And uh, Eki just dumps that one in. 20 seconds to go. FBK coming out of the right hand side. Nipsuli. Afe is that one's going to be sent all the way down. Loimu bumped off of the puck. And Timu just sends it out, but it's kept in. Poke checked. And what a play by Pleamaker at the line, but he can't get it out as the shot is steered wide by Cafe. And that will do it, Brandon. Wow, and we were not short of action to say the least there in the third period. Fedius that aggressive as can be really felt as if they were just a moment away from potentially breaking this thing open, tying the game, but for Landa's defense and the goaltending of Kape, enough to pull them through, hold on to the lead, and get a 2-1 to -one victory in game one. What a game, Tegan. What a game is right, and FBK almost came back and made a really good push nonetheless. Yeah, and I think Fetty is sad. You may not get the win here in game one, but a lot of positives to draw upon, especially the way they played there in the last 25 minutes of the 60-minute game. You could really tell that they had Forlunda on their heels for a good chunk of the game, and let me tell you, if Kape doesn't make some of the saves that he does in a few of those sequences, we could easily be going to overtime. A great effort from Fediestad, but the goaltending of Kape and the defensive efforts of Ferlanda, just a little bit too much for Fediestad to mount the comeback. Just a little too much. So now, Ferlanda, five wins in a row, Brandon, and that is a tough train to stop when that confidence piles up. Yeah, but I do think that, I think Fediestad does have some confidence as well going into this game. They played well in this game, very well could have tied it and taken it into overtime. Outplayed for Lunda, at least in my opinion, in that third period. They only had one shot for Lunda throughout that entire third period. So Fediestad, they were the aggressors in that third and really through the end of that second. They played well, just ran into a hot goalie in Cape that made a lot of really key saves. Even though F Forlunda does have that momentum winning five straight, Fetty Stat feeling just as good with the way that they played here against Forlunda. A good effort, just like we said, a little bit more from Forlunda based off the defense and the goaltending we saw.
Well, Brandon, what an amazing, amazing game that was. And we have nothing less coming in this next one as FBK is going to be going against Frolunda for maybe seven games, depending on the outcome here in the ECL Elite, Brandon. So we're going to pop out, take a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Lähdetään haastamaan yhdellä ja yhtä vastaan. Loistava nälkäisen pelaajan ratkaisu. Oi, mennään. Luukulla ollaan valmiina. Ja sitten katsotaan. Kaikki kestää. Vanhalla aikaisella. Kiekko lapaa. Ilma veivi. Klassikko. Maali! Vilhelm vei todella komeasti. Nakki kioskille. Werneri nakki on loistava vahvistus Vilhelm joukkueelle. Minkä päällä lakukastiken maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. Well, Brandon, obviously some delicious looking items there from our amazing sponsors and a delicious looking game two we have coming up after uh, Frolunda took game one. Yeah, and a well-deserved win there for Frolunda. They get the 2-1 victory. They had the two goals there, one in the first, one in the second. And it was enough to hold them off and put them through for that game one. But like we were saying, Fedius, that I think you have to feel pretty good about their chances here in game two if they play the way that they did in that third period. Obviously, when you go down two to nothing, you expect the team to come out more aggressive and kind of have that sense of urgency. But... I think that that game too, considering they are down in the series and that one to nothing, I think that translate. You do not want to drop the first two games against a team like Forlunda. If you give them that advantage, they are going to pounce on it. They do not want to have that far of a deficit. It would be absolutely huge for them to tie this one to one and essentially turn this into a best of five going into the next day. Yeah, exactly right. Is it can this next game is massive. Uh, if FBK comes in and ties this up, it's a totally different series as it's now a best of five. But if Frolunda comes out and takes a commanding two nothing lead, you know they are going into five or uh, possibly six undefeated games, depending on how the next one goes, Brandon. And that is just, um, you know, when the train's running that hot, it's tough to stop. Yeah, and something to keep in mind is that these two teams played, obviously, in the regular season. That wasn't too far ago. They played February 6th. Fedistad won both of those games, 5-4 in overtime and 4-3 in regulation. They were both one-goal games, but Fedistad has shown the ability to beat this for London team. They have the confidence knowing that they can win. They played relatively well in Game 1. For Lunda, they're going to have to keep doing what they're doing, especially on the defensive end, if they want to get this to a 2 0 series lead. Because Fetty has got a very good team in their own right. They have that confidence in beating them twice in the regular season. We'll see if maybe they can pull this through in game two, get things back to even. But it's going to be tough against Verlunda. You know how much they want to go up 2 0. They're going to like their chances if they do go up 2 0. So expect them to come out with a lot of aggression, wanting to take that big series lead and get that cushion for themselves going to the next day yeah and this sets up for a pretty interesting run to the finals depending on how these games go with the two sweeps happening in the first round and then we're seeing the undefeated teams not yet lose yeah and you saw it earlier with hrs they had the sweep versus eight seed goons and they carried that over versus granite so much so that they had two shutouts in those two games so now you get a for London team that played a really tough opponent in Havu, another team they're very familiar with, and they go in the next round against the Fedius that team that they are very familiar with, and is a tough opponent at the four seed. So two series that are those two teams you kind of expected at the end, A Treads and Forlunda. I'm sure a lot of people had that penciled in as the finals matchup when they saw the brackets come out. Well, both of them so far have shown why they are predicted to make it, as you can see the playoff tree on your screen. There is the playoff tree like we were speaking about. The undefeated teams there uh, uh, in Frolunda in eight reds, not losing in the quarters, not losing yet in the semis. And, well, this is going to set up for some really good hockey, depending on how things go towards the finals, Brandon. Yeah, and it's going to be a lot of fun, especially if... We can see Fedistad and Granite maybe come back 
and get these series closer. Obviously, granted a little bit of a steeper hill to climb compared to Fedius stat since they are now down two to nothing. But there's a little extra motivation for Fedius stat, especially because we like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, they played this for London team in the semifinals last season. And Frolanda swept them. They remembered that a lot of the players in this lineup were in that series. They do not want to meet that same fate once again. It's one thing to get swept once against a team like Frolanda. It's another to get swept twice. You never want that to happen. You always want to be able to be competitive and hopefully win a series. Fedius Dad has a high expectation for themselves. They want to meet that finals. They want to get past that mountain of Frolanda and get themselves to that point. But they're going to have to win this game too and put up a really top-notch performance in order to do that. Now, how about these goaltenders? Is let's pop in and take another look at them as they uh, are both amazing numbers. And it was Cape that ended up taking uh, the win in that game, Brandon. Yeah, and both goalies did about what you would expect them to, turning in fabulous performances. Unfortunately for McSave, it wasn't enough to get him the win. But Cape on the other end made multiple saves on chances that could have very well been goals for Fediestad. So we're only one game in and we're seeing the difference that both of these respective goaltenders can make. Both of them are top of the league, top of the division, and top of the EU in goaltending for a reason. We saw a sneak peek of it there in that game one. I expect to see a lot more of it in game two and four. Yeah, both of these goaltenders, very, very good. Uh, only one goal, uh, Brandon, was the goal that was actually a passing play. The other two were broken that ended up going into the back of the net regardless. And that just attests the skill that both of these gentlemen have. Yeah, and obviously you're going to get those plays sometimes. They're going to allow those goals every now and then where there's really nothing you can do out about them. They're going to get that puck bouncing off that skate or even sometimes bouncing off of your own pad where you make the save and... The puck somehow magically finds a way to trickle through. Unfortunately, that's just the way the game flows and the way the puck can bounce. But nevertheless, Cop aid the victor in that game one. McSavid playing a solid game, but two to one score. It's about what you'd expect with these two guys being in net. They're not going to allow Maine to go past them. Each team going to be imperative for them to take advantage of the chances when they get them. Taking advantage is what's going to have to happen here, Brandon, regardless. Is if you're FBK, you got to take advantage of every little thing. Is uh, the red wall in Frolanda holding the line uh, has been very, very deadly upon zone entries here in the ECL Elite Playoffs. Yeah, and that's going to be something to really look for because it seemed like Fedius that started to break that a little bit in the third period. They got a lot of offensive zone time and a lot of chances, so much so that you almost felt like Fedius that was maybe going to tie this thing up and bring it into an overtime, but Cape, the goaltender for Ferlanda, was able to hold true and not allow one to go past him. But nevertheless, we'll see if Fedius that can continue doing what they do in the third or for Lunda can keep that stellar defensive play that they have done. It is so hard to break past that red and green wall, as you mentioned, that they have when you get at that blue line. Fetty's that weren't able to do so in the first two periods. They seem to find some answers in the third. We'll see if that translate here in game two. Would be huge for them if it does. It would be absolutely massive for either of these teams, Brandon, is this prize pool is pretty hefty. As you see, first place uh, uh, taking away a total of uh, 22,000 euros. Grand total altogether, 33,000. And the ECL Elite, Brandon, FBK against Frolunda. I am It's King Lime. He is B Major. And we're here with Sports Gamer GG for some amazing EC. L Elite playoff action for London this time in white FBK in green you see their lineups in the bottom right and left hand corner and here we go as Sebe Larson gets that one ahead it's going to be Afe drops it over to Fapatafen holds it goes back to the point of Mr. Nipsu he tries to put one through but it's blocked by Potsoff and he gets it over to Pleamaker Pleamaker back to Potsoff over to Eki Eki Potsoff and they score and Frolando wasting no time to get on the board right when you saw Fedius that get the zone and look like they maybe get a chance or two. Frolando comes up big on the other end on the counterattack and takes advantage. And who else but the man wearing the golden helmet to capitalize on the first goal. Pat Slav opens the scoring for Frolando. What a goal and what a pass, Brandon. It's 
That pass comes through. Potsov just taps that into a yawning cage. Here comes Foppel Thompson. Tries to send that one through. It's a big block there by Pleamaker. Now and on the right hand side, trying to get something going for FBK. He's fighting in the corner as he gets that one back out to Mr. Nipsuli. Oh, the D to D pass wasn't there. Sebe Larson was back a bit covering. It's Mallet in the left hand corner. Puts that one through to Afe, back to Mallet. Mallet trying to wrap that one around. Mr. Nipsuli had come off the point, and FBK doing a good job here on the answer, getting some pressure, Brandon. Yeah, and they're going to need it down one nothing early in this game. Going to have to try to find a way to respond, but they're doing a good job kind of breaking that trap up just a little bit, creating a little space for themselves. We'll see if they can continue to do that or Forlanda can sure up that defense, especially on the blue line, like they did in the first two periods of that first game. Forlanda only was in the opposing territory for about five seconds, putting that puck in, and here they come now as Loimu. Download a plea maker. Maker. Nice move as he comes out with a sashay backhand, but a great save by McSavid. Well, they might have not been in the zone much to start this game out, but boy, when they've been there, they have had some high danger opportunities. McSavid having to come up big on that one to scoop that one and keep it away from Ferlanda. Ferlanda, like we said, really taking advantage of their chances in the other zone. Zeki in the corner, tried to thread that one out front, but Fapotofflin was back helping out with Malin, and here goes Malin on the left-hand side. Poked off, and Eki's gonna bring it out for Brolunda ahead to Pleamaker. Good drop pass, back over to Eki. What passing between Potslav, Eki, and Pleamaker. Fapotofflin ahead to Malin. It's gonna be Afe, drops that one as Sebe. Larson tries to get the cut through, and it almost went off Eki and in. Papo Tovlin tries to move that one out front as Afe was open, but that one's going to be held on his cap. He wants to slow things down. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of action in front of the net early. Both McSaven and Cape have had to be sharp so far. A lot of really sneaky opportunities. We'll see if Fighting Stad can break one in as they get into the offensive zone. Puck almost held in by Sebe Larson, but he decides to take it out, and possession is key. Mr. Nipsili now curls and brings it through the neutral zone. Right hand side to Malin. Malin trying to get that one through. He almost slips through a check, but it's going to be Potsloff to Eki. Eki over to Pleamaker. Pleamaker walking in, looking back door, but Mr. Nipsili with an amazing interception as we get a power play here for FBK. And this is kind of where FBK started to get things going in the last game. I believe it was Eki that took the penalty in game one that got them going. This time, it's the center in Pat's lap. So this is going to be really interesting. A right wing in Eki taking the faceoffs. Huge here if Fetty Stack can get that faceoff win and get in the Ozone to get something going. Puck down low behind the net. Popotovs and fighting with Loimu. But Loimu shovel shots that one up. And it's going to be all the way out. Playmaker giving chase here on the PK. And here's the aggression of Frolundas. They don't care if it's a penalty kill. Power play. Five on five. Three on three. They are forward checking nonetheless. Malin brings it over the line on the left hand side. Ends up being given away to Fapotov, and he spin passes, but he cooked that pass too hard, Brandon. And that's when you see those players hold the pass button for too long, and the, the uh, teammate they're passing it to is not able to pick it up. And that was a change in NHL 22 passes. A lot more difficult to get off if you hold that for too long. It will bounce off that stick. Won't be a clean reception. And now, FBK, they weren't able to capitalize on that power play. And they're going to give Frolunda a chance here. 11 seconds of 4 on 4. Frolunda going to get about a minute and 49 second power play as the penalty taken by the right winger of uh, Fapatoflin. Lots of ice out here for about 11 seconds. Pleamaker, down low to Eki. Eki, holding it in the corner, back to Timu. Timu to Loimu. Loimu, D to D with Timu. They go down to Eki, back door, and that one goes just wide, as I believe McSavid got a toe on that. Loimu keeps it in. Eventually comes out, though, and Pat's laugh goes over to Eki. Eki on the left-hand side, he's tied up. Gets that one over to Timu to Pleamaker. Pleamaker. Back to the line to Timu. Back to Pleamaker. 
Playmaker up high. What a pass to Eki, but it goes off his own player in Potsloff. As that looks like it was a for sure goal. Is Playmaker now battling at the line against Malin? Playmaker over to Eki. Five on five hockey now. Eki down to Playmaker. Playmaker up high, and what a shot and a save. As great shot from the point was robbed. Puck in the left hand corner is Patslav trying to get some offense going still, but Afe sauces that up the right hand side. Mr. Nipsili, good play over to the left hand side to Afe, but was stoned by Kape. Big block there by Eki doing it in both ends, and what an exciting end to the first period. Yeah, we saw plenty of action. We may have not seen a goal there in the last 15 minutes of the game, but wow, did we see some high-end chances. And speaking of the first goal of the game, there is a nice little replay of it right there with Patsalov driving the net and burying it at home in the slot. But a lot of chances for both of these teams. You saw Rolando and the power play get things going, and even a little bit afterwards, a few big chances that were either just a block away or a save away from becoming goals. And then Fedyastad on the other end, counterattack, turns into chances for them right at the end of the period, and Kape coming in with a few big saves. So this is going to be a high-octane game, team. We're just going to see a lot more of this, a lot more opportunities and a lot more chances. Going to come down to who can capitalize and who can take advantage of the ones that they get. The goal was very, very early in the game, Brandon. It happened almost instantaneously. As Frolunda goes up 1-0, as we get a look at our player cams, who do you think is most ready to go? in that group right now. It's hard not to say Eki. He is such a big game player. He's been in just about every moment you can imagine, whether it be sixes or ones. The guy has been on the big stage, both literally and figuratively. He is the guy that is used to this big moment. He, nothing faces this guy. I mean, nothing seems that's, to face him. Either. That's fair. I would say Pleamaker is dripping as he comes in now. Pleamaker almost with a chance to put that one in the back of the net. Is That would have been storybook. As here we are at the ECL Elite Semi-Finals. Rolanda in white. FBK in green. For Rolanda up 1-0 in this semi-final series. Best of seven is Timu ahead to Pleamaker. Pleamaker, nice little touch to Timu. Oh, what a move as that one was poked off his stick and went off the post. And we almost saw another broken play go in there, Brandon. Yeah, that was really dangerous. Fetty is that with a collective sigh of relief on that one. Nearly squeaked in on, Mc, on McSaven off the post. Loimu, back to his partner Timu. To Loimu. Loimu, good pass up. Oh, what a play to Playmaker from Podsloff and McSaven flashing the leather. Yeah, it looked like he was playing center field on that one. Just caught it straight and took it in for himself. And Ferlando really starting to buzz a little bit. A few chances to start this period. We'll see if they can capitalize and maybe extend that lead that they have up one to nothing. Here's Fapotov. Wraps that around behind the net. Sebe Larson. Nipsuli. Back to Sebe Larson. That one's going to be dumped in right-hand side. Chop back to the point. Is That was almost a 200 IQ chop there by FBK. Is that was a nice one there, Brandon, but it ends up back in their zone. Puck moved ahead. Eki intercepts and Potsloff ahead to Pleamaker. Pleamaker back to the point of Eki there, covering back to Pleamaker. Pleamaker looks out front. That one's steered back to the corner. Here's Fapotov. Fakes the Omaha play and skates it out. But then you have that wall of Frolunda to deal with. Is that one's going to be passed through. Loimu over to Timu. As we are halfway through this game number two. Playmaker coming down with speed. Cuts in. Shot is on him. Save it again with a great save. And he says, we're playing those. It's Lime's birthday. Puck over on the left-hand side. Malin. Back to Fapo Toflin. Fapo Toflin stripped of the puck. Good puck support to Sebe Larson. Sebe Larson coming through, poked off his stick, back door, and what a save is Kape! Off of Malin, unbelievable save, and he makes another one, and Luimu eats up that rebound, gets it over to Timu and says, get it out of here, boys. Potsloff down on the right-hand side to Pleamaker. Pleamaker stops up, that one's going to be picked off by Malin, and they just come out here as FBK, Brandon. Wow, Kape with huge saves. Fediestad just has to be like, man, when can we beat this guy? He has been all over in these two games. 
That one shot on by Potsloff and a great save by McSaven. And that's what makes these games so interesting, Brandon, is it may be a one nothing game, but this is probably the most exciting one nothing game I've ever called. Yeah, I mean, to be quite honest, there are 7-0 games that have less action and less excitement than this. It can be a low-scoring game with a lot of action between big saves from the goalies, big plays from the defense that we see right there from Rolando as they get a chance. Becky back door, but McSaven knew that one was coming, and he was already there to make the save. Puck going to be clapped all the way down. Doesn't work for the Omaha play, but look at FBK taking a page out of Frolunda's book here with a very aggressive forward check, but allows Eki for a free entry. Eki, a little give and go behind the net with Potsloff, but it doesn't connect as Mr. Nimsui sends it up the left-hand side. Loimu, good interception. Potsloff now, he brings it over the line. That was onside, I have no idea how. Eki, back to the point of Loimu. Loimu, still holding it down to Eki. That one's going to be stripped away, and it's up the right end boards Nipsuli to Foppeltoff then tries to get activated into the play here at the end of the period but it's going to be Eki who brings it in for Frolunda. Patslav down to Eki. Eki still battling with it behind the goal line but it's going to be back here now and we've got Playmaker playing D. As Mr. Nipsuli fires it's loose and it finally squeaks behind the net. I have no idea how it got there Brandon. Yeah, I thought that that rebound was going to pop out there. It looked like Papa Toplin was in position to capitalize with an open net, but the puck just not bouncing the way of Thaddeus that on that play. And wow, what action we have seen through 40 minutes of virtual hockey, Teague. And it does not get much better than this. Fettius Dad trying to tie the series up one to one. For Lunda trying to get a true grip on the series going up two to nothing. This is the type of hockey that you love to see and that you love to call. What a close game this is, Brandon. Nine shots for, for Linda, four for FPK. The time on attack, very close. Only one hit separating, two face-offs. They have equal amount of penalties. Um, you know, this is just all around good stuff from both sides. As we dive into period number three in the ECL Elite Division Semifinals. Here at Sports Gamer GG. Is that one's going to be picked off? And here goes Playmaker off to the races. He's tripped up. And well, if this game couldn't get any more exciting, we're going to get the most exciting play in hockey. And it's going to be Playmaker. As will it be Gucci or will it not? Is 44 on the pen shot? This will give him a chance here. Playmaker coming in on McSaven. Playmaker back and forth. McSaven with a great diving save. And McSaven, you could tell he determined before that penalty shot even happened, he was going to flying poke check. And unfortunately for Forlunda Pasolov, just not able to react in time. A great job from McSaven. Probably his biggest save of the game so far. Couple tops in now. Brings it up. Nice little move in the neutral zone. Looking to build after that penalty shot was missed by Forlunda. Patslaw behind the net. Sauces that one up to Playmaker. Playmaker, nice little touch up at the Eki. Eki wraps it around behind the net for Potsloff. Look at this little backhand play. Is That would have been cute, but they went off the back of the net. Is now Playmaker brings it in, just trying to get that one in deep with 16 to go in the third period. Eki trying to chop that up the right-hand side. Potsloff, he gets it right back on his stick. Potsloff. There's Malin. Malin claps that one down. Maybe an Omaha play. He is there. It's Afe, but what a poke check by Loimu. Eki, Potsloff, Playmaker brings it up. Playmaker into the zone. Nice little touch up to Potsloff, but a better poke check by the defense of FBK, and they have been absolutely fantastic in these two games. Popple Toflin just stopping up in his own zone. Mr. Nipsuli up to Malin. Malin just floods that one down deep. Loimu's poked off his stick. Here's Eki now. Eki. Ahead to Playmaker. He's got pass left coming late. And what a save, McSaven. As Playmaker had the same idea, Brandon. What a save from McSaven. He's been huge in his third period for Fetty Stab with just 11 and a half to go. This game could easily be 3 0, if not the efforts for the Fetty Stab goaltender. Eki. Ahead to Playmaker. Playmaker tries to come all the way through. Can't connect. And Malin. 
Off the right hand side, Mr. Nipsuli. Good puck support. Is it, that's one thing FPK has done very, very good. As you see it again here, as they get a couple shots on Cafe, and he makes amazing saves. Is their puck support's been phenomenal? Here comes Eki with Pleamaker. Eki! He gets it poked off his stick, and what a back check by Sebe Larson there, Brennan. Yeah, and they're going to need more of that Thaddeus dad. Now the time, not their friend anymore. Wouldn't be shocked to see that aggression start to ramp up from them. We saw it in game one, and it worked out well. Now down one to nothing, and time starting to dwindle. Don't be shocked if you see it again here in game two. Lopletoff and behind the net. What a ball, oh, what a passing play. There's a swing and a miss from Nipsuli, but that would have been a gorgeous, gorgeous play. Puck brought up and dumped in for FBK. It's been all FBK in this period. Mr. Nipsuli, he's bumped off of the puck. Fapletofsen now. Fapletofsen, nice moves. Tries to get that one ahead to Afe, but again, that red and green wall. I guess it has, they're white right now, but you know what I mean. They're playing well there, holding the line. Is for Lunda. Noimu. Clean maker up to Eki. Eki gets bumped off the puck, just dancing in the left-hand corner, and he doesn't mind doing that as it's a time game now as he puts that one into the player that's down, and Malin gets that one ahead to Mr. Nipsuli with the saucer pass over to Afe. Here's Fapotofen. Big bump off Potsloff over to Eki. Eki. Sauces that one up. It's going to be all the way onto the stick of McSaven. McSaven just sends that one up. It's the second time he's done that. We'll see. If FBK can make something happen here with two minutes to go. There's Potsloff as he's met in the corner by Fapotov and they get it back to the point. It's D to D to Mr. Nipsuli into the middle of the Malin. He tries to fire that shot. It's blocked by Pleamaker and then the right hand corner Malin. Malin shot on and a great save by Cape. Under a minute to go now. In ECL Elite semifinal playoffs. Eki now brings it up, gets it ahead to Potsloff. Potsloff over the line. L skating into the zone, holding it on the backhand. Behind the net to Pleamaker. This is 200 IQ stuff. This is what I was talking about here, Brandon. Is very smart. Are these for London players? That one's going to be bumped off and brought in by F.A. Waits. And what a shot by Sebe Larson. And a better save by Cape. That one goes all the way down for icing. But what a glove save by Cape as he flashes the leather, Brandon. Yeah, and this is just a masterclass goaltending performance from Cape. This game could easily be tied or even led by Fediestat with the way they've played. And Cape, just a man on a mission not to be denied so far in this series. And Fediestat will see if they can break him, but they only have 18 seconds to do so. The first 59 minutes on the side of Cape and Ferlanda so far. And that was probably the best chance of the game, Brandon, uh, where Sebe Larson comes in with that rip and a huge glove save from Cape. We've seen amazing saves from McSavit at the other end. You know, just phenomenal stuff from either side. We'll see if FBK can build on that as they get the puck in the offensive zone. Fapatoflin drops that back to Sebe Larson. Back to Fapatoflin. Fires and a great save again by Cape. Puck is loose over, and they score! Afe backdoor! Wow! And who else but Afe to get the goal? He had eight in round one. He had one in game one. And he finally is able to help Fediestad break open the wall of Kape. And with mere seconds left in the third period, Fediestad ties it up. Wow, what a game, Tegan. Home, cool, collected, and putting the puck in the back of the net is Afe. My man didn't even crack a smile after that call there, Brandon. But what a goal by FBK and Afe. And the fun doesn't end there. Fedius Dad gets a power play, and it's Patslav who takes the penalty. Well, Patslav going to the box for two, so... FBK, if they can't score here, will start off overtime with a power play. And they put themselves into a pretty good scenario here, Brandon. They do. And I know it might have been a game saver from Cape, but it was a game tire from Afe that gets Fediestad in this overtime. And Tegan, it's something that we mention all the time. Big-time players show up in big-time games. Afe, a guy that... 
I think personally is one of the better goal scorers in the ECL elite. You need guys like that to make those plays, score those goals when they are called upon, when they are needed. Fediestad backs against the wall. A goalie and cop, they were not able to beat for a good while in this game, only once in this entire series. And with just seven seconds left, off a right place, right time, puck comes out of the scrum and finishes it off. What a play, and what else, Tegan? It wouldn't be ECL to leave playoff action without some overtime, wouldn't it? It would not be ECL Elite semifinals playoff action here at Sports Gamer. As extra hockey, we love it, you love it. Stick around as here comes Zeki for Frolunda. As we have Frolunda in white, FBK in green. Their lineups in the bottom left and right hand corners of your screen. As Plea Maker just kind of sauces that one all the way down. This is a good kill start for Folunda. Here comes Foppo Toflin through the middle. He's got a lane and oh, that was poked off his stick as I thought he was going to part the seas there, Brandon, and cruise right in. Yeah, no parting of the Red Sea right there, Tegan. A great job from Folunda to close that gap and not let Foppo Toflin get that open space for a chance. Here's Malin now as he comes in with a nice little move to open up some space, but it's picked up by Pleamaker who tried there to hit Patsleff out of the box but couldn't connect. Mr. Nipsuli back to Sebe Larson who goes all the way back even further to Mr. Nipsuli. Back to Sebe Larson looking for a lane into the zone. They don't get one. Pleamaker with a great interception. This could turn into an odd man rush. Eki just firing one low hope and a dream, but no dreams right now. Eki gets bumped off the puck. McSave it holds on to that one. And maybe, maybe we've had enough birthday throwouts today. Yeah, I, I guess the present stopped there, unfortunately, for you, Tegan. But something to keep in mind, Fetius that three of their games last week against IQ went into overtime. They were 2-1 and one in those games. This is not something that they aren't used to. Say Bay Larson over to Mallon. Mallon drops that one back. It goes all the way back into FBK territory. And here comes Mr. Nipsuli. Over to Sebe Larson. Good interception by Pleamaker. He tried to thread the needle to Eki, but he couldn't get through as there was too many skates. Here's Eki. Eki, good pass over to Podsalaf, but it gets knocked off his stick. And Mr. Nipsuli gets that to his partner, takes it right back, and here goes FBK. They end up giving that one away upon entry as that trap is so hard to get through. That is the Frolunda wall. Timu dumps that one into the left-hand corner. Good shot by Eki. Back to Loimu. Timu, shot is on! And Mr. Nipsuli with a great block, but an even better block by Pleamaker on the pass. As he picks that one back up in his own zone and just kind of lets his mates get their energy back. Slows things down a little bit as they go to Eki in the middle. Eki drops that one back to the goaltender. Only, only amazing players do that, by the way. As here comes Patsla. Patsla back to Loi Mudu Timu. Back up to Patsla in here and looking at FBK taking a, a page out of Frolunda's trap book. As that one's back to the point, and oh, Potslav tried to get his twig on that one, but he looked like he just swung over the top of it. His puck's brought over to Timu. Potslav, plea maker. It's a good job by Fapo Toflin. They try a clap play, but it was Timu the only one back, Brandon. Yeah, that's a big play there from Timu. He's been all over it defensively and has contributed a little bit offensively for Ferlanda too. Do not be surprised if maybe he is a sneaky candidate to get that game-winning goal for Ferlanda. Sneaky candidate, I like it. Is we're gonna have somebody sit down for two here. Because I'm not sure who it was, but it's gonna be Ferlanda nonetheless going back to the box. Mr. Nipsuli through the middle over to the right-hand side. Fa Papotovlin, or sorry, that's the goalie. It was purple, not blue there, Brandon, as we were getting to see McSaven's skills in the offensive zone. Might have to change the tag to McDavid if he were to score on that one, but nevertheless, Fediestad gonna go on the power play here once again in overtime. They were not able to confer on that first one. Maybe second time's the charm. Remember, too, for Lunda, perfect on the PK so far. Fediestad gonna try to break that here if they want to win this game. Box lock. Dumps that one all the way down the ice. Picked up now by Sebe Larson. Sebe Larson. Malin. Good pass through the middle to Afe. Here's Sebe Larson. 
Bringing it to the middle. Over to the right hand side to Mr. Nipsuli. Back to Seve Larson. Mr. Nipsuli. Seve Larson over. It's loose after a big toe save by Cape. And it's thrown out. But a good pick up by FBK once again. Malin in the middle. He's got it high at the line. He goes down low. Aaron Pass ends up on the stick of Timu. But that one is held in by Mr. Nipsuli. What a defensive play. Seve Larson curls at the line. Goes back down to Malin. Malin. Throws it through and nobody home or nobody had their stick down as Mr. Nipsuli now goes back door. Potsloff almost puts it into his own net. Mr. Nipsuli fires Cape and he scores! Cape once again in the back of the net. Cape got the game tire, gets the game winner. The clutch goal scorer himself does it again and Fettius that they were seven seconds away from being down two to nothing. They claw their way back and come up huge for a big two to one overtime win in game two to tie the series at one apiece. What a way to end today, Tegan. It does not get much better than that. Wow. May I fail? Bay, number 33 they should call him 22 because that's how many times he did it and the date he did it on two big goals from afe one to force overtime one to force a win and this series is all tied up at one brandon and when it was off of the rebound play off a right place right time similarly to the first goal that wasn't a rebound play but it was in a scrum where the puck just popped out he was in position to take advantage and he capitalized on that one this time it was the original shot by i believe it was sebi larson we'll have to see the replay again to confirm that but just a rebound shot right there and afe puts it in and Fetiestad, what a performance, what a comeback from them. Absolutely gotta feel gutted for Kape in that one as well as he played to not get the victory. But you feel good for McSaven who made multiple key saves and one play to remember, the penalty shot save from McSaven in the third period. They are not in this position if not for that play. Huge, huge victory there for Fetiestad. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Brandon. I was just going to say that McSavid um, made that penalty shot save. He made a couple of very good saves that put them in this scenario. And so did Cape, where he yeah. flashed the leather with 18 seconds left. But that was an Afe shooting because he came in and he was able to get a couple there. As you see them bounce around in front. But this is just good or great placement. You know, you're at the right place at the right time. You're playing good hockey. You get yourself in between the goaltender and the puck. Find it and that's a gorgeous goal there. Yeah, and Afe just kind of won that battle there. A little bit of a scrum in front of the net for positioning, and Afe got the better of, I want to say that was Tibu there or Loimu. I'm not sure which one. I know it was one of the defensemen, but nevertheless, Fetty is that with... Could, what what could be a series changing win potentially there yeah. you go down two to nothing going into tomorrow and for Lunda really has everything ahead of them if they win one game even if it goes to Thursday it's three to one at the very minimum and they're potentially on their way to a sweep now Fetty's that after not being able to find answers for Cape, they do so with seven seconds left, get a couple of power play chances capitalize in the overtime period on the rebound play to Afe. And now you go into tomorrow really with a fresh mindset. You tied the series one to one in a thrilling fashion and you avoided the sweep unlike last season. This is any one series that could have maybe been a changing series in turn or a changing game in terms of the longevity of the series, Teague. And that was really big for Fetty Estad. It was massive, massive. So let's pop over and take a look at the bracket as we were expecting maybe to have two undefeated teams, but that was not the case as FBK came out with a 1-1 tie in theirs and it is a 2 nothing lead for Granite Gaming, Brandon. HRED's that lone team for the undefeated now as Forlunda falls into overtime in that game, but that's going to be interesting to see how that Granite and H-Red series goes. I know this wasn't the best day for Granite in terms of their play, but they're a really good side. I don't think that we've seen the last of them. I wouldn't be shocked at all if they come out tomorrow and really fly at the highest order. They know what they have to play for, and their backs are most definitely against the wall. I'm not saying they'll pull the comeback off, but don't be surprised if they make H-Reds work for it a little bit more. That's a good Granite team, and I don't think that they're going to go down very easily, despite that 2-0 deficit. 
And if you want to find out if they are going to go down easy, come back tomorrow with our good friends, Toogie and Sin. And that will be tomorrow in 1945 CET, where you can see Farestad BK versus Frolunda and Granite Gaming versus H-Reds. That'll be games three and four in both of their respective series, Brandon. And it's going to be amazing hockey again, just like it was today. And it's only going to continue to get better and continue to ramp up the more we go down this road of the playoffs and the deeper that these two series each get. We know each game becomes a little more important the more you go into these playoff series, especially with that series we just saw with Fetty Stat and for Lunda with it now being tied one to one. So that being the first series covered tomorrow, that's gonna be a lot of fun. While H Red's on the other side, a chance to maybe punch their ticket early get the sweep, and just kind of sit back and watch on Thursday to see if Rolanda or Fediestad can get their ways through. But like I said, don't think we've heard the last one granted, but a lot to look forward to tomorrow, Tegan. This is that time of year. It's playoffs. There's close matchups. There's high-quality teams. Happy to be a part of it and can't wait to watch Tugi and Sin call that tomorrow. That should be a blast. Oh, I'm so excited. It's playoff hockey, Brandon. There is sweat in the air, and it is the ECL Elite Semifinals. We are wrapped up here for today. We want to thank our sponsors at Wilhelm, Kovalon, Lakritzi, and ST Hockey. I am Tegan. It's King Lime Blair. He is Brandon B. Major Bigsby. And from Sports Gamer GG and everyone behind the scenes, we hope you have an amazing rest of your evening, and we'll see you tomorrow night.